Hello everyone, Waldos is here bringing you another episode of Maker Machinations for your daily dose of death traps. Today we're going to go into another trap deep dive, this time focusing on the cheapest damage dealing trap in the game, the Corrosive Cube. As always, if you enjoyed the video, please make sure to like, comment and subscribe as it really helps me out in growing the channel so I can bring you more Meet Your Maker and other gaming content. Before we get started, I just want to talk about a recent patch that has been added to address a few minor issues as well as add a bit of a quality of life change. Firstly, Behaviour have confirmed that they've updated the algorithm that recommends which outposts are available when you go into the raiding screen, with a focus of making less raided bases more prevalent. This is a great quality of life change as hopefully it will mean that you'll no longer have a situation where you build an awesome base and no one visits. This patch also seems to have reduced the time a second wave triggers very slightly, and a couple of people have mentioned that second wave traps are spawning in and triggering a bit faster than they normally have been doing. Now, I've only run a couple of outposts since this change was made, so I haven't really had a chance to test it in full, but it was spotted by a couple of members of the community. Um, Spooky Vanguard was the first person to mention it, and I've had a couple of other people mention that it does seem to be a bit faster. So I'll be testing it a bit extensively when I'm working on my Holocube video, which will be out next week, and I'll go through a bit of detail on it then. But for now, let's get into the deep dive. The Corrosive Cube is an extremely simple yet effective trap that will damage any custodian that steps into its shiny outer surface, killing them after around 3 quarters of a second. It also has a benefit of not obstructing projectiles unless modded, enabling you to create ammo traps or conceal a threat on approach, both of which are extremely powerful tools when building a particularly lethal labyrinth. They also cost an extremely low amount of capacity, coming in at only 15. This allows them to be used en masse, and it isn't uncommon to see an entire room built out of these blocks, designed to force players into specific positions where other traps become more effective. Corrosive cubes are an extremely obvious threat, so unlike most traps, you aren't trying to conceal them. Instead, you want to use them somewhere visible. The only time you'll really be hiding them is when you hide them under a hollow cube if you're doing a pitfall trap. As such, when positioning your cubes, look for areas where their presence will force your raiders into a more deadly direct path, or where you can restrict player motion to make people double guess where they need to move to safely. A good and fairly overlooked place to put these is on a ceiling to stop a player from double jumping, which is really good at catching people out if they try and jump away from bombs, as the instinctive thing to do when a bomb drops is to jump. It is extremely important to know, however, that raiders can grapple hook through a single corrosive cube, and using the arc barrier can actually get through multiple cubes if they get the timing right. So never use corrosive cubes instead of walls to the exterior of your base, as you're opening up potential shortcuts to crafty raiders. However, you can be a bit sneaky here and put a corrosive cube on the outside and a hardened one just inside of it, which will cause raiders to try and repel into your base and immediately die because they hit the hardened cube, which is a good little gotcha for people trying to find sneaky shortcuts. So at the time of recording, there is currently a known bug with corrosive cubes, which can be particularly difficult to deal with. And this is that traps can actually trigger through a corrosive cube if it is a second wave cube, without actually having sight of the raider. Because you can't see the traps, and you also can't risk shooting them because you'll just lose your ammo, it means that you can make some pretty impossible corridors. The devs have however said that this is unintentional and will get patched eventually, so try not to rely on this too much in your outposts as you may find it will stop working in the near future, but currently it is a good way to create some deadly paths. Overall, take caution when using it as it won't be valid forever. So going into mods, the Corrosive Cube has a few interesting and unique mods. However, due to the cube's static function, they are fairly minimal in terms of what they do and their overall use will remain relatively the same. And the primary thing these mods change is their interaction with other traps. But let's break them all down into some detail so you can get an idea of how you may use them. So the first of the mods is Hardened. Hardened is a pretty decent and very underused mod. In fact, I've only seen one or two outposts actively use it, which is a bit of a shame so it can be quite useful. This mod takes your corrosive cube and removes one of the core features, the ability for projectiles, guards and raiders to pass through them. And whilst that might sound like a straight downgrade, it's actually extremely powerful in certain situations. The biggest one being combining the trap with bomb dispensers or cannon backs. You see, normally bombs will fall into a corrosive cube, exploding safely in an already damaging zone. 
However, by adding the hardened mod, the bombs will actually bounce off the corrosive cube, meaning you can restrict players' movement with cubes they cannot pass, without taking damage that is, and then drop bombs to make it extremely difficult to clear corridor. It is important to note, however, when using this mod, that only the top and the bottom of the cube are hazardous. The side is completely safe to walk into or grapple onto. I have tried rotating the cube, but unfortunately this doesn't seem to change the orientation of these surfaces. Like all traps, the corrosive cube also has access to the second wave mod, which allows it to activate when the gem mat is collected. Now this has the benefit of giving the cube the appearance of bedrock until the second wave, meaning you can create winding corridors of these cubes that appear as a normal corridor until the second wave. This also allows you to create collapsible HRV pathways that fall away once you grab the gen mat. This is really good for making linear bases, because as long as Harvey has another way out of the outpost, you can actually collapse the path behind you, forcing a player forward, or forcing them to go backwards through a more difficult route with lava for a floor. For this to work, it's important to note that you need to make sure you have a second route for Harvey that is made out of static blocks that will not get removed when this happens. And this route needs to be longer than the other route that you've got going into the outpost that goes over the cubes, otherwise he'll automatically run and go through that original pathway. However, this is a great way of getting your players to go for an unfamiliar route out of your outpost. The next mod is Splatter, and it sounds great on paper, but I've actually noticed its impact is fairly minimal, due to the prevalence of speedrunners. Splatter causes a cube to throw out a splash of acid whenever it is hit or pierced by a projectile. This travels a short distance before leaving a small patch on the ground that becomes hazardous. And whilst this isn't overly dangerous, there are a few ways of using this to slow down speedrunners by throwing bombs into the cube and scattering lava on the ground. And I'll show an example of this when we look at some trap combinations. And the final mod is Opaque. This mod is very simple in that it makes the corrosive cube impossible to see through. However, tracking traps that have spotted you will still track you from the opposite side. This becomes very useful when using things like an Iron Claw or a Hunter Bolt Trap, as they can still target you, but you can't see where they're triggered from if you've moved back around the cube. And I personally really like this combination. So let's jump over and have a look at some trap combinations. The first one is combining bombs with opaque and hardened cubes. So a combination of opaque and hardened cubes are really good for obscuring away a bomb trap, especially if you place them on the ceiling going over a ramp. This means that the bombs will drop and get dispersed, and because the player's first instinct is to jump, they will jump up into the corrosive cubes. Now depending on the angle that they hit the corrosive cube from, you may get more power out of opaque cubes here so they can pass into the cube and take more sustained damage. However, the bombs will bounce off the hardened cubes if you want to reposition your bombs by having them bounce off the ramp and then off the ceiling. And do remember that all traps can have up to two mods on them at any time if you wanted to combine these two elements together. Number two is the Opaque Hunter. The Opaque Hunter combination was one of the first trap combinations I ever used, and it's a great noob trap. For this, simply place a bolt trap into a space that can see between two opaque corrosive cubes. When the radar passes over the gap, it will trigger the trap, which will then track the player through the cubes, which will take them by surprise. It is important to note, however, that if the cubes are too close to the trap, or you're in a very thin corridor, they don't have the dispersion needed to make this more effective. So you always want to make sure that there are at least two cubes distance between your trap and your opaque cubes. This particular trap is also very good with the new Relentless mod for the Bolt Trap, as the spread is over a much longer duration, which makes for a very interesting damage corridor. In at number three, we have the Splatter Bombs. This is one I found particularly useful as a method of slowing down raiders, as the splatter effect remains behind for a few seconds. For this, simply place a splatter cube opposite a bomb dispenser. These could be on the ceiling with a floor-mounted bomb dispenser, it could be on the floor, it could be on the wall, anywhere where the bombs are going to impact the surface. When the bomb trap triggers, every single bomb that hits that cube will cause a splatter effect, which will persist for about a second and a half after the bombs have actually gone off, forcing the radar to slow down. Do be aware of this, however, if you are using hardened cubes, the bomb will need to hit the top or the bottom of the cube to cause the splatter effect. Next up we have the ammo trap. I covered this briefly in my quick traps guide, but corrosive cubes are great for making ammo traps. Here's a couple of examples of different ones. The first one is the same as I showed in my earlier video, with a one cube deep, two cube high hole in the wall behind where your guards are stationed. This causes the guard to fall into the cube and then down into the second cube, 
where they are unreachable. Most raiders, however, have now come to expect this when they see a corrosive cube behind a guard. So you can actually make this slightly different to catch players a bit more unaware. To do this, create a blank gap behind the guard and then put your cubes behind them in a pit. This can't be seen when approaching from a lower level than the guard. But it has very much the same effect, whereas if the guard is hit, they will fall into the hole and that player's ammo is now gone. And finally, we have one of my favorite traps, the Dead Man's Drop, an absolutely disgusting trap which I can't get enough of. This trap is great for getting really quick second wave kills in corridors leaving the gen mat room. It involves dropping guards with Dead Man switches through second wave corrosive cubes, causing them to explode as living time bombs. To do this, create a hidden chamber in the ceiling of the room you want the guard to drop into. My favorite of which is this design for a sloped ceiling chamber. Then place a corrosive cube with a second wave mod in the pathway between the guard and where you want them to fall into the room. Finally, place your guard of choice, normally an enforcer, with the dead man switch into the chamber and then set a patrol that walks them into the corrosive cube. Because of the corrosive cube being second wave, that path is actually invalid, so the guard won't walk onto that path until that second wave starts, causing them to drop shortly after the gem mat is collected, which again makes them great for whichever corridor leads out of your gem mat room. Now there is loads more that you can do with corrosive cubes as they are very, very flexible, but these have been my current and most successful combinations. If you have a particularly interesting combination that you've come up with, I would love to hear about it, as this is one of the traps I think will get really creative with more people inputting into it. Now, this is all I have for you today. I hope this makes your death traps that little bit more deadly. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the wasteland.